Gospels are full of beautiful stories, and stories really kind of uh, paint pictures for us. There's in John chapter 4, Jesus is tired, and he is uh, where he sits at the well, and a woman comes, and he asks her for a drink of water, and she says, why should I give to you? You are a Jew, we're Samaritans, we don't deal with each other. And he says to her, if you knew who I was, and if you knew the gift of God, you'd ask of me, and I'd give you living waters. So two things she doesn't know. First, she doesn't know who he is. And secondly, she doesn't know what the gift of God is, the living waters, the Holy Spirit. And as a result, she, she, she's not so interested. So he continues in a conversation. And as the whole thing goes on, and it's time she realizes that he is uh, the savior of the world, he is the Messiah, she says to him, first she realizes he's a prophet because he tells her, You've had five husbands, and the man you are now with is not your husband. And she says, I perceive you're a prophet. But when the Messiah comes, he'll show us all things. And he says, I am the Messiah. And later, as she tells the people in the town, uh, all the Samaritans come out and says, Now we know this is the Savior of the world. And like this idea of knowing who Jesus is, if we don't know who he is, you know, we don't place a lot of value on him. And as a result, we don't know the gift of God either. Christ is the Son of God. Christ created the heavens and the earth. Christ formed the heavens with a span, just with his hand, one, one breath of his hand, he stretched out the heavens. It says he stretched them out like a curtain. So simple. You pull back your curtains like that. God put the whole universe there like you pull your curtains open in the morning. And he holds the, the islands as just small dust in a balance. The nations are a drop in the bucket to him. And, you know, he's created all things and sustains all things. And he is the savior of the world. And we thank God for it. And, you know, when he says this, he also says, if you knew the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, which we also don't know, who is the Holy Spirit? Just as we said, who Christ created all things. Christ sustains all things. Christ has formed the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God hovered on the face of the earth. It is the Spirit of God we see that created and was part of the creation of the heavens and the earth. All the Trinity are involved in that. It's also the Spirit of God who breathed when Israel was scattered. It, it says, God gathered the bones together. And then he breathed into them and that nation was reformed again. First he brought the people back together out of their captivity. And then by putting his spirit back in them, put the national spirit and unify them as a nation. When God made man from the dirt of the ground, he breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. Again, the spirit of God. Uh, when the church was formed, first came at the day of Pentecost, the spirit was poured out. And then we were all baptized into one body and the church was created. We were born again by the Spirit. We're born of the Spirit. And you know, the, uh, the scriptures are given by our God breed. All scripture is God, Theonousis, God breed, the Spirit of God breathing. It's the Holy Spirit who created the world. It's the Holy Spirit who has put that Spirit in us. It's the Holy Spirit who has reformed the scattered nation of Israel. It is the Holy Spirit that has given us the scriptures. It's the Holy Spirit that by him we are born again and regenerated. And it's the Holy Spirit that has made the church. We can't operate in this world without the Holy Spirit. You know, we battle against forces that we have no idea the nature and the mode of operation of them. We battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. And it is the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, the labor that God has given us to do. It's great. It is very great. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. And it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And, uh, you know, the temptations that we encounter, sin works and moves in our body. Sin works and moves in our mind. And it works. It's a very powerful force. And we need this Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, if you knew who I was and you knew the gift of God, and it's that gift that we need. And, uh, you know, let's pray, as Jesus said, ask uh, uh, you know, ask for the Holy Spirit. And he says, uh, just we'll finish here. 
he says, if your your son asks for a bread, do you give him a stone? If he asks for fish, do you give him a snake? If he asks for an egg, do you give him a scorpion? You who are evil, give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit who ask? Meaning this, don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. It's not a scorpion. It's not a stone heart. It's not a serpent crafty and going to lead you into slippery places and into things you never wanted to do and deceiving you and poisonous in its nature like a scorpion or a serpent. Don't be afraid uh, of the Holy Spirit. There is a fear. And uh, just last, he told us saying this, you know, uh, be filled with the Spirit. But do we want to be? Do you want to be possessed by a spirit? We read about spirit possession in the Bible of evil spirits, unclean spirits. And, and uh, But now to be possessed by the Holy Spirit, for him to take control and to take ownership. But just lastly on that, there is a difference between the, uh, being possessed by an evil spirit and the Holy Spirit filling you. An uh, evil spirit sneaks his way in or forces his way in. The Holy Spirit comes in only by invitation and with gentleness. Evil spirits will seek to dominate and to overpower and will seek to take control of your mind or your body and do things in subtle ways. The Holy Spirit only with your cooperation, only with the full use of your mind, full use of your will, full use of your emotions, and that uh, only in total cooperation. And uh, this is the difference. So we just thank God that we, we, that we can know who Jesus is and know the gift of God and ask, and uh, we do ask, Lord, today for the living waters. Uh, you'd ask of me and I'd give you to drink living waters that you'd never thirst. We do pray, Lord, for living waters uh, uh, to be filled with the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.